Okay, so I'm going to create another uh, curtain wall, another storefront. Uh, from uh, this point to the end of the grid here. Okay, and now this curtain wall on the 3D view, it's, uh, it's here. So how can we uh, do it? We can select this, we can attach uh, to the roof. And uh, here you see that we have two um, mullions. Uh, last time I remember that I deleted this element, uh, but um, well, let's delete the element and then we will create something different. Okay, so this is it. Technically, it's solved, but this is not feasible. I mean, uh, if you submit this file to a curtain wall company, uh, they will tell you, okay, fix this. I'm not going to cut a glass with this shape this tiny. So this is not acceptable, fix this. So what I would do here is to, um, try to get rid of uh, this element. How can we do that? If we select just the bar, we unpin this and we can get rid of it. But we do have this line, okay? So to get rid of the grid line, uh, we can select the grid line then remove segments. And now I select this one and it's removed. You see that now everything is glass and we have to do the same thing with this one. Select, unpin, uh, I'm going to select all these. I'm going to unpin all these, get rid of it. And now the grid line, I want to remove segments. Uh, this one, this one, and that one. Okay, so now it looks better because uh, we have to avoid this. We don't, we don't have these kind of corners in a real, in a real project. Okay, so you see here that we don't have a tiny rectangle unless we are a lip skin. Um, okay, uh, if you're a genius of uh, architecture, then basically you can do whatever you feel like. And if you see uh, uh, this guy, Lipskin, uh, you can see that those partitions are like crazy. Okay, so that is extremely expensive just for the sake of being expensive. Uh, there is no reason to, yeah, so this is what I mean. You see that there's like a tiny uh, triangle here. Um, but again, I'm always thinking about uh, money and uh, probably that's why I'm not, uh, I'm not a good architect because I'm always thinking about saving money. Uh, but yeah, you see that um, you can be creative, but I, I, I really don't see the point uh, in doing uh, these kind of things, okay, okay, for for me and for every uh, architecture uh, uh, teacher, that would be uh, to fail the course. Okay, so you can have this shape, and then you want to be creative with the with the angles of the curtain wall. That's fine. You can be creative, but the, the amount of money that these tiny triangles uh, cost, in my opinion, it's not it's not worth it. But maybe it is. Okay, so you can uh, see this. Uh, so this guy, Lipskin. Who am I to uh, criticize this uh, this guy? Anyway, since I'm your teacher and you're working for me now, uh, don't do that. Okay, so make sure that uh, the last uh, uh, we don't have these tiny uh, triangles in this. So make sure that you uh, delete this, delete the the mullion, delete the grid line, and here we have a a clean. Uh, it's curved, so make a curved. Uh, curtain walls or, or uh, pieces of glass. Again, it's expensive, but at least uh, we have prevented from this tiny triangle that you, that it's uh, it's curved. It doesn't make any sense. Okay.
So let's do this. Uh, so instead, and, and again, before copying a lot of things, make sure that you are happy with the, the final shape and then you can start copying, okay? But uh, try to uh, try to select the, the right um, grids for the, for the curtain wall. Then uh, I told you that, well, we have to, we need different sections because in this curtain wall, at least we're going to need a section through this uh, wall, through the opaque wall. And then we're going to need a section through the, uh, through the double, double skin. So before doing it, uh, we're going to think what, uh, what we need. Uh, well, I explained you that, so this is what we're going to do to solve uh, the transition between the double skin and uh, the glass. We will keep this simple, so we won't extend the curtain wall up to this. Why uh, don't I do that? Because I think it's nicer, okay? Uh, it's just, I was taught that when you have uh, uh, something like this, and then you have something like that, this uh, should be glass. And this is another material. I know, when I was a student and I talked to my instructors and they read, uh, this is a common issue, okay? So you have a wall here, this is uh, maybe it's made of brick and uh, suddenly uh, you have a shape that it's not straight, it's not a flat hook or, or whatever, uh, it's curved. So the transition between something, between a wall and a curved roof, it should be always glass. Where did I learn that? Uh, well, there are a lot of examples. Uh, the example that showed me how to do it was uh, La Casa del Agua de Navarro. La Casa de... This one. Okay. Uh, so... Look at this, uh, we have a wall that it's made of stone and then we have a roof that it's made of, uh, I think it's zinc or aluminum, but something metallic. So the transition between the, the stone and something that it's metallic, it's always glass because otherwise it will, okay. So you see those pictures. Uh, okay, so. Okay, so there is always a transition and, and, and this is the contrast. We have something that it's a stone, it's a natural material. And here we have something that it's uh, artificial. So it's, uh, it's, not, uh, it's not natural stone. They are not tiles. They are, uh, this is the zinc or aluminum uh, roof. So the transition is always glass, okay? Because otherwise it would look, it would be difficult uh, to do that. So, well, uh, since uh, I was taught uh, to do this, this is what the, so we have, we have something weird in the roof and then we have something like flat and solid in the wall. So the transition between the roof and the wall, glass is a good option, okay? So this is what I'm, what I'm doing here. And, uh, Okay, so you have this nice picture. Again, where is that the picture here? This one. So you see that the, it's nice because we have nature here. Then we have something that is natural, it's natural stone, but it's a uh, handmade. And uh, finally we have glass and then we have a roof. Okay, so I think that goes well with the idea that we have uh, here. Uh, the transition between different materials, transition between different textures. So glass uh, always helps. Uh, so that's what I want to do here. Okay, so here there will be uh, an opaque wall and here uh, we will have this roof. So I will extend the, or I will, I will create a curtain wall here uh, to create that shape. In this case, it's different. In this case, uh, we have the double skin, and then we have this. Where's the double skin, by the way? Here, did you get rid of it or what? Uh, yeah, I pulled it out. Sorry. <laughs> okay, anyway, uh, let's imagine that there's a double skin there, and uh, and then we will protect this 
in the call out uh, with something different. Uh, so first, make sure that you extend the first curtain wall up to this. And in this case, if you have this kind of wall, uh, let's find a solution uh, for, for this part, okay? Uh, what is that level? That's level, uh, let's go to South Elevation. Okay, that's level 30. So from level uh, 30 to level uh, 31, but it's not 31, it's 37, uh, there will be uh, like a curtain wall. Okay, so let's do that. Let's open level 30. And on this level 30 here, I want to create a curtain wall from level 30 up to level 37, and then I will uh, attach this to the, to the roof. Okay, so let's create wall, a curtain wall, storefront. I'm starting here up to this point. And now let's see uh, how it looks there. Okay, so we have this element here. We have created a curtain wall from uh, the steel structure up to this. Now we have to attach to the roof. And we have to delete this element. And again, we have to uh, probably, uh, we have to make a decision uh, in the same thing we do here, the same uh, partition, horizontal partitions we have here uh, should be there as well. Uh, so far, we are going to delete all these elements. I'm going to unpin everything, delete, and now I select this, remove the, the grid line segments. And there you go. Okay, so now we have a glass that doesn't have any weird uh, partitions here at the end. Okay, what's the problem now? Uh, let's look at the section. I won't see section one. Okay, so we have section one. This is the, uh, the space of the curtain wall, you see? And this is the wall. Uh, what is this? This is uh, another mullion, another curtain wall. So what we have here, is that this curtain wall is beyond the, the wall itself, okay? Let's open a callout four. And in this callout four, we see what happens. And we have the structural element. And we have the structural element here. Here you have created the, the repeating detail. So you did that, okay, great. Uh, and this is the, the curtain wall. Uh, so look at this gap. I don't uh, like it. Okay, so what can we do uh, to solve this? Let's uh, go back because making a credit, I can't, I don't know, maybe I, I belong to another generation, but I can't think uh, using credit. I can uh, understand that there is a problem here, but then if I have to uh, solve this problem, I have to go back to the board or I have to go back to the paper and I need to uh, work uh, this detail. So in this detail, uh, we do have the, curve, the, the horizontal structure. That means there. Uh, we do have the uh, concrete uh, masonry unit blocks. Okay, um, at the top of the structure, well, we have the, the truss, so the truss apparently comes here and uh, here, this is the bottom board uh, of the truss. Then uh, we have the vertical element of the truss here, and this is the diagonal. 
here. Okay, this is the trust. And uh, now we have a line of the curtain wall there. That, as you can see, there is a gap. I don't, uh, I don't, uh, don't like this. Uh, so what would I do? Because now there is a volume uh, here for the curtain wall. The glass is there. And we have all that stuff, all the layers here about the thermal insulation. So here we have the thermal insulation. And then we have the air gap, and then we have the uh, aluminum layer here. Okay, so this is the aluminum, and um, yeah, there's a gap here. We can extend, and this is good, we can extend the thermal insulation beyond this. We solve the thermal breach that we would have here, and the aluminum is extended up to this point. So that's the issue. Okay. Uh, this is not working. It's not working because we have a gap here. How can we close that? Uh, so what would we do? It's not. Uh, it's not easy. But at least we are aware of this uh, situation. Okay. So we have started. Uh, our curtain wall here. This is the projection of another curtain wall. So this is our gap. Okay, so this element starts here at this level and then uh, it goes up. So we have this, uh, this issue uh, there. I think the best way would be to uh, make the most of this uh, mullion and probably if we placed uh, this uh, curtain wall or this mullion uh, here, and then there would be a transition between the uh, glass and the uh, aluminum, that the glass in the, the, the aluminum will be at the same level. We won't have this gap. So this mullion will stop the thermal insulation, which is uh, something good. And then there will be another vertical mullion. There will be uh, a connection between the vertical structure of the truss and uh, the aluminum mullion. And it's not the best detail in the history of architecture, but at least everything is solved. Okay, so I interrupt the thermal insulation, I have an aluminum mullion, and then uh, from this point to that point, I start uh, something different, okay? But there's not a gap, so we have everything uh, aligned. Uh, we can uh, extend this, we can always extend or increase the thermal insulation, and then we could uh, have this. But I think in this case, uh, the best thing would be to move this uh, curtain wall leftwards so that the mullion starts where the thermal insulation ends. So let's do that. Can I do it uh, here? Can I select the curtain wall and move it? I can. Okay, 
well, here we don't have this. I think I, I didn't select the right thing. Yes, make sure that you select the, the curtain wall. And now when we, when we select the curtain wall, we can move it here. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so uh, we have the curtain wall. This is the mullion. The mullion uh, starts uh, when we interrupt this. And this is the transition between the aluminum, uh, the mullion and the glass. Okay, so I think that works well, kind of. Uh, what's the problem now? If we go to level 30, uh, is there a problem? No, it's not a problem because we have, uh, you notice that we have moved uh, all the curtain walls at the same time. So we have uh, uh, decreased the gap between the structural element and the beginning of the curtain wall. You see, if I undo, yeah, so that was the original position of the curtain wall. We have moved this curtain wall uh, backwards up to this point because we, we, we have adapted the, the place of the curtain wall to the place of the opaque wall. It's fine because there is a gap between the curtain wall and the original structure. It's fine uh, having this gap. Uh, and it's even better because uh, the, the, the smaller the gap, between the curtain wall and the structure, the easier the easier to easier to fix uh, the the mullion to the original structure. Okay, so we're using this gap. I think it's good. So now uh, we can look at we can take a look at the three D detail. And it looks better. You see that we are uh, finishing uh, this panel here and we are starting a mullion and there is no gap between the, the aluminum and the, the mullion here. So everything is aligned and I think it works well. Okay. So yeah, I think looking at this on the 3D, it looks well and looking at the uh, call out it works well because we are not interrupting the thermal insulation you can tell me uh, you are not interrupting the thermal insulation the thermal insulation is interrupted here and here you have a mullion and here you have glass yep but uh, the thermal envelope is this Okay, the thermal resistance of the glass is lower than the thermal resistance of the wall with the thermal insulation and all that stuff. But a uh, glass, yeah, we, we can see this. Okay, so we have the, a wall with thermal insulation and then we start the curtain wall uh, with the glass. So we have the, the same kind of detail uh, that we can find uh, there. Okay, so this is a wall. Here we have thermal insulation. Uh, we have to end this wall, and we have to start with the with the mullion like this. Okay, so this is the wall. We have thermal insulation. And here we start with the um, okay. So this is uh, the kind of the same kind of thing, but we don't have a gap between the, the wall and the gap. Okay. So this is what we have done. Again, we can think about this detail lot but uh, I think we have solved uh, we don't have any water leak apparently because uh, water uh, goes down uh, we have to seal this probably we need a gasket or a rubber uh, connecting these two materials probably we might need that uh, we don't interrupt the thermal insulation because we continue the thermal insulation. When we stop the wall, we start a mullion 
and then we start the, the class. The same thing we can see here. And uh, what's the connection to the roof? Okay, so here connecting this to the roof, uh, we can see that there is a mullion here, and then we start the we start the class. So again, uh, there's uh, there is no gap between the roof itself and the curtain wall. So we are on our way uh, to solve uh, that detail. Uh, do we have to be uh, so thorough if uh, we are just uh, showing this section? We don't. In this section. That level of detail is enough. Okay, so we don't need anything else. But in the callout, it's not enough. Uh, we have to insert uh, more things, and probably we would need to uh, add more details here. So this is what we're going to do uh, now in this uh, callout. Okay, we have a lot of information here, and we still have to work uh, with this uh, callout. I don't like uh, this. Okay, so if we select the trash, uh, it's weird. Uh, so probably we have to do something here. Uh, but now we are working in the callout. We are not working in the section anymore. In the section. Yeah, we have the same information here. If we zoom in, we have the same information. But in the callout, we have to add more. Okay, so it's uh, time to stop working on the 3D, and now we will uh, move to the 2D uh, world uh, with this callout. But I think it's a good uh, starting point. So we have the section and the callout. So this uh, roof, it's made of uh, aluminum, rigid insulation, five inches, and aluminum again. I have to be consistent. So if I have decided that this is the way I'm showing the thermal insulation, I have to do it. Uh, and if this is thermal insulation again, so I have to turn uh, this roof into something yellow with this hatch. By the way, I don't like this because this is five a five inch uh, wall, <clears throat> and this is not five inches. This is four inches. Okay, so make sure that you change this, and then we adapt the hatch to the uh, width of this thermal insulation. So let's do the same with the roof. I select the roof. And uh, what do I have to do to turn uh, this hatch into the hatch that we have here? Uh, first, I have to override graphics in view. And what do I have to change? I have to change the cut pattern. Okay, I have to change the cut pattern to uh, color, solid field. And then I think I use this uh, yellow color, black. Okay, so now the, the same color, the thermal insulation, it's always the, the same color. That's something that we should. So if we are working with thermal, different uh, thermal insulations in wall and uh, roof or whatever, okay, we have to make sure that it's the same color and the same texture. Uh, so I'm going to add, uh, annotate, the insulation. I'm going to save the project. And uh, now the width, it's not four inches, it's five inches. Okay, so if we start uh, here, it's not to center, it's to near side. No, it's to far side. Yes. And one, two, three. I have to move it slightly down. 
Well, probably this is happening because I didn't start in the right place. Okay, so I'm going to do it again. I'm going to uh, go to insulation. It's to the far side, I think. Uh, so make sure that you snap at this point and now it will be perfect. Okay, once we have done this, we can crop it if we don't want to show all that. But uh, make sure that uh, we don't have a gap between this and that. Okay, um, that's good. Uh, you have this hatch, this <clears throat> black hatch here. I think it would be nice uh, to get to know the difference between the, the truss and something that it's not structural. How can we do that? Well, first we need to apply the same criteria uh, to everything. If we have decided that uh, this structural element, the section of a structural element, it has a black hatch, uh, we have to do the same thing uh, with this. This is a structural element. This is a structural element. This is the, uh, the beam, and that's another beam. Uh, so this hatch should be black because it's a section of a of of structural element. So let's select, overwrite graphics in view. And the cut pattern, it's gonna be uh, solid and black. You see? So now we have the same hatch here and here, because we have decided that the, the structural element, it has the, the same hatch. Okay, so if we uh, start, uh, if we have another structural element here, which is the beam system, we have to make sure that this is The same element that we have here, if this is black, it should be black too. Uh, the same thing with this here. Override, cut pattern, solid, black. Okay. Um, let me try something first by element foreground solid. Okay, I like this. So I'm going to do it again. Um now I have something that it's uh, metallic because the truss it's something metallic, uh, but it, this is not the section. This is the elevation of the of the truss, so it doesn't have to be black. But if I want to make the difference between something that it's metallic and solid and something that it's air, I think it's good having a, a slight uh, gray uh, hatch here. So let's uh, select the truss. Let's override graphics in view. And now we don't have to work with the cut pattern. We have to work to, uh, with the surface uh, pattern. So I'm going to make it solid. And the color, I'm going to use a very uh, light gray, lighter than this. OK? So uh, when you are changing the color, try to uh, create a RGB uh, code that you remember. Uh, it's 230, 230, 230. Well, it's something that we can remember or we can uh, write down, see what it looks like. Okay, I like it. Okay, so there's a slightly difference between the, the air, which is white, and the gray, the light gray uh, of the metallic structure. But now the beams are part of the metallic structure too. So if I overwrite graphics in view by element, if I work with the surface pattern, uh, the solid feel, the material, and now I remember that this was a uh, 230. 
okay, and apply. Okay, so now I can understand that uh, this uh, slide gray, it's part of the, the structure. That's good. Uh, and the section of the structure is uh, different. Okay, so I can see the difference between uh, and the structural material, a metallic structural material hatched in black, and this is hatched in uh, gray. They are both metallic, they are both, they are both structural elements, but uh, we don't have exactly the, the same color because uh, we don't have to. Okay. Um, so here uh, we have this uh, terrible uh, mullion curtain wall. And you remember that uh, one of the callouts. Uh, yes, uh, we were working with this. Okay, so by default, we have just a rectangle. And if we can insert a detail with an actual uh, frame, it will look better. So this is what we're going to do in this uh, call out. We're going to try to find something uh, that it's a good detail uh, from a curtain wall. Do we have these kind of good details, curtain wall details in Revit? Well, good. Probably it's not the, the right uh, word, but we can try. Uh, let's go to insert, load family. And here we have detail items. So let's see what we have. We have general, concrete, uh, equipment, plumbing, electrical, utilities, uh, exterior, thermal, metals, concrete. Do we have uh, windows or wooden plastic openings? Okay, let's say openings. Here, metal door and frame with doors, storefronts. Okay. Yeah. So here in the openings, storefronts. So we are working with a storefront wall. It's a curtain wall. Uh, we can see different uh, things. So for example, if you have a corner or you have a transition between two different elements like this, so there might be details, but what we are looking for is that. Okay, so this is the top, this is a mullion, uh, the top mullion. So this would be the, the element that we have here. Okay, so this is uh, that detail. We have a mullion and then we have a glass going down. So we have a mullion and glass going down. So we can uh, open this one. And then uh, we need another one. Okay, so this is a, a mullion and a glass uh, going up. So let's uh, open this one. And let's see if we can find something else. Okay, we need this one because this is just a, a mullion uh, and the glass is going up and down. Okay, so that would be this detail is this. A mullion, and then we have the glass going up, glass going down. And we have this detail, and then we have, so we don't see because there's a screen, but uh, there's a mullion like this, top mullion. A bottom volume and something in the middle. So I think with these three details, uh, we can have something uh, good enough uh, that will improve the quality of the detail. So let's open these three details. And now I'm going to annotate. Uh, uh, I want to uh, add a detail component. And uh, what's this? The storefront. Uh, no, I want the the seal and the head. Okay, so let's start with the seal. And uh, if we click uh, space bar, uh, we change the orientation. No, it doesn't work. Uh, okay, let's do this because we want to mirror.
There you go. Okay, so now we can place this detail here. It's nicer. Okay, at least we have more detail. Uh, there should be a difference between section. In the section, we need we don't need to add this because it's too small. But here we should add this one. And uh, I think it looks better. And finally, we have to do the same thing here with, uh, with this mullion. So I have to go to a component, a detail, and this is not the seal, this is the head. This one. And again, I have to insert. And then I have to uh, mirror. And then I have to place it here. Okay, imagine uh, that we need a mullion uh, here in the middle because uh, this glass is too large. Uh, then we can insert detail component. Uh, the, 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 the uh, double glaze seal. Uh, no, the typical mullion section. This one. Then mirror. And place it here. Okay, so here we have a, well, it's not uh, outstanding, but at least we can see that there's a mullion, there is a glass, and then this is the cap. If you see this wall from outside, you will see that there is something made of aluminum uh, holding uh, two glasses. Uh, if you want to make it even better, uh, Google uh, the detail uh, curtain wall, no, detail curtain wall. Uh, what's your uh, favorite uh, brand of curtain walls? Shuko. Okay, so with this, uh, you can have details of triple glazing, or you can have uh, details of uh, corners. Okay, and uh, you can have a best detail of a transition between a mullion and a wall. And all, the, all those details are for free, and I'm sure uh, they have Revit families. Okay. Uh, so uh, let's go to Shuko uh, detail uh, Revit family. Welcome. No, I want Shuko. Okay, free download uh, Shuko beam objects. So we have everything we need. Okay. Uh, and these are really, uh, why uh, Shuko? Well, this is a German brand. Um, what are the, if when it comes to frames, there are three or four uh, brands in the world that are the, the best. I don't know who we have information about them. of the glass manufacturer, but we don't know uh, who uh, designed uh, this bullion. Well, in Europe, at least this is mainstream. I don't know in the United States, but when you want to do something high quality, uh, then you have to call them. And then they have engineers uh, that solve your problems. Okay, so you can, okay, I want to do this. I have a curved, I have a curved roof. And then I have this, I have a class, and then I have a transition, I have the, uh, a wall here made of uh, uh, of reclamation reunions and that. How can I solve it? Uh, they have engineers and they give you the detail uh, that you can just uh, put in your, your project. Of course, they charge you uh, to do that. But uh, they are amazing, uh, those, uh, those guys. And their products are 
the top. Uh, this, uh, as you can see, this is what we call a thermal uh, bridge breaker. Okay, so there will be a thermal bridge between aluminum and aluminum. So those guys have designed uh, this element, this frame, in which here we have some insulating material. Okay, so uh, this is a thermal break uh, breakage. Okay, so they uh, solve the thermal break, the thermal break that we or the no. The problem is the thermal breach. Thermal breach is that we have a continuous aluminum or metallic element from outside inside. So to prevent this, we need the breakage of the thermal breach. So this is a thermal breach break. Okay, so we break uh, the thermal breach by adding uh, this insulating, this black stuff, which is made of plastic or foam. Uh, so this is a thermal insulating material. So if we have a triple glass, and we have this thermal breach uh, break, um, then this is a high quality uh, bullion. Uh, we can have bullions uh, without uh, this kind of details. Okay, if uh, it's a good quality, we can always find uh, this uh, black stuff between the outer and the inner uh, aluminum frame. Now, almost every single uh, uh, curtain gold manufacturer uh, which they include uh, this thing. Here, this is something interesting because we have wooden bullions inside and then we have something made of aluminum outside. Okay, so the world of the curtain wall, it's improving a lot. Uh, Revit, it's too bad, but they haven't included anything like that. Okay, so this is a very basic uh, mullion, but if we want to make our detail more, we want to increase the quality of our detail, probably we, we, we would need to go to these guys and they will provide us with uh, Revit family's details uh, for free that we can, we can use. Okay. Anyway, at this point, I think this is enough. It's better than the original private curtain wall. Okay, so at least uh, now we have that. Uh, if we want to, uh, the problem now is that we are showing uh, the Revit curtain wall, the detail, and the 3D object. So for the callouts, I think I would hide in view. Uh, this uh, Revit I think I have to hide the category. Yeah. If I hide the category, uh, this is cleaner, okay? Because I can see the, anyway, I should extend, okay, let's uh, edit the family. And I told you that uh, if you want to extend all these elements, uh, you can always uh, select this, make it longer. And then load into the project. And you see that you can change it. You can change the length of the glass. Uh, well, we should find out the, the distance between this uh, lower mullion and this one. And then we should extend this up to the, the right point. We can do that easily. And even if we do this, if you have time, uh, we can uh, trace a good 
Mullion detail like that and add more details. I don't think it's worth it. I think it's better uh, email uh, Shuko and they will provide you with a, with a good detail. Okay, this is not bad, but this is the default uh, Revit detail that we have. It's not outstanding. It's just a double glazing. If we want to introduce a triple glazing, we should do something here, okay? So we can improve it. Anyway, uh, I think at this point, this is not bad, and at least it's better. There's a there's a quality difference between the section and the callout. So this is what we are looking for. In the callout, uh, we have defined uh, textures. Uh, we have improved this detail. Uh, we have included the right hatch. And for example, <coughs> here, uh, what is this so uh, here we have selected the we see something about the trash this is not nice probably uh, if we had a, a detail like uh, like this one in um, and we want to protect this structural element i think here We would use a uh, foam to protect uh, this uh, metallic element. From the fire. Can we do that? Yes, we can. Uh, and we can do that by using uh, annotate uh, this uh, region. Either field or <coughs> masking region. Uh, okay, let's use a, a field a region here. And now we can select the, the lines. So we can select all the lines of this. Element. Uh, and I can continue because it has to be a closed uh, loop. Uh, I think I have to do both or two of them. Sorry, so I'll do this first. I think this is a closed loop here. So click OK. Uh, lines cannot intersect each other. Yes. Okay. Oh, mierda. Right. So I, I'll do it again. So let's work with the region, field region, select elements. I'm going to do this first and then uh, the other one. So I'm going to select all these lines. this, I continue. It's here and I click OK. Oh, that's it. That's what I wanted. OK, so I have uh, created something hiding uh, what's uh, behind. And uh, now if I select this and I overwrite graphics in view, uh, uh, this is, uh, we don't have a cut pattern or surface pattern, we just have the, the surface. So if I have a solid fill and I make it yellow, okay, so this is uh, the same material as this one. It's a thermal insulation or fire protecting uh, material, something like that, okay? And now I can uh, mirror, if I select mirror, this axis, there you go. But I have to do it again. Come on, all right. Solid and yellow. Okay, so now I have uh, this idea. So I'm protecting the, the steel element. Uh, it's uh, protected by this thermal insulation. And then I have used other thermal insulating material 
and to protect the element from inside. And then I'm hiding something that I didn't want to uh, didn't want to look at. Are we done with this? No, we are not. Okay, so we can uh, keep on working uh, because uh, we have a call out here. But what if you want to define uh, something else? You can have a call out of this call out. Okay, so imagine that we create uh, in view. We can create a call out of this of this one. Okay, so this is uh, section one, call out four, call out. Uh, and, and now if we want to zoom in, uh, then we can uh, increase the quality of that uh, detail. We're not going to do that, but we could. Okay, so we can always add more details. So depending on uh, what we are doing, uh, we can add more details. I think that's, uh, that's enough. But I think at that point, uh, remember that this was the gypsum board and uh, this was the, um, uh, the concrete masonry unit, and there is an air gap here. But we do need uh, something. We, need, we do need a connection between the, um, uh, the concrete masonry unit and the gypsum wall. And what's that? So the gypsum uh, wall is here. This is an air gap. But we need something metallic uh, connecting uh, these two uh, things like this. Okay, so this is attached to the uh, concrete masonry unit, and this is attached to the uh, gypsum wall. It's something uh, very light, very tiny, but that's uh, attach this. It's hollow. It's hollow because we have this air gap, but at the same time, at some point, uh, we have something attaching. Uh, this uh, keeps on board to something that is solid. Okay, so can we do that? Uh, we can try to insert another detail. I'm sure that we have families here. Uh, insert family. Uh, those are not storefronts because. Uh, and what is this? Uh, what's this? Material processing, no, not concrete metals, structural steel, steel making. Yeah, so we can use uh, one of these uh, furring channels. Okay, so we have uh, different connections uh, between different things. So let's uh, select the first one, open, and now I'm going to annotate component, detail component, and I have this channel here. Okay, so this is the channel, it's too small, so I'm going to rotate it. And now I'm going to place it here, and I'm going to scale it. Scale, scale. Okay, <laughs> uh, when we have a family, uh, we can't scale uh, that detail, but I can change it. First, I have to find out uh, the distance between this point and that point. It's two inches. And then I double click here, I edit the family. And now uh, I only have to extend Create line. Okay, I need a two inch gap. And then I want to oh, or probably I can uh, type here two inches. Does it work? No. Okay. 
This is what I wanted. I have created a two inch railing or element. Uh, and then if I insert in, in, into the project, uh, and so, well, it has to be slightly smaller or even better. Oh, yeah, I see what happens. I have taken the wrong dimension. No, it's two inches. There you go. Okay, so I have uh, placed something here connecting the, the concrete masonry unit and this wall. And then I can copy these different types. Okay, imagine that this uh, firing or this railing is uh, not uh, beautiful enough for our project. Our project deserves uh, something better. Uh, we can detail, we can, uh, we can work with it. Uh, so in uh, annotate, uh, we can work with uh, regions. Uh, you know that we can work with uh, field or masking region. We have done this. Uh, we can work with detail components. If we have a detail and we can load it, or we can work with detail lines and we can create our own detail. Okay, so let's work uh, with detail line. And uh, what do we want to do? Uh, imagine that uh, we want to work uh, with a railing uh, or a detail that is uh, like this. Okay, because I feel like this. Uh, so let's do it. <clears throat> um, I can start uh, the detail line. Something like this. And then I can use another line like that. Now, if I select this, I can mirror. Now I delete this. I want to uh, split element and now I want to trim. Okay, I have that shape and now I can apply uh, an offset. Uh, the offset is something very thin, let's say one eighth of an inch, it's too thick. Uh, one divided by 16. And now I can trim. And now I can close the detail line. Okay, so this is it. So basically I can do anything. If I consider that this uh, furring that uh, I have found in Revit is not good enough, my project deserves something better. So I can create my own detail and place it here.
Okay, so basically, uh, when we uh, know that we can uh, insert, we can work in 2D, we can insert uh, families, uh, we can uh, request uh, good details from different companies, or even we can create our own details. It's, it's just a question of time, uh, making uh, a Revit, uh, the, the things that we're used to uh, working with, uh, something that looks like a professional detail. It's a question of time. It's it's uh, it's not uh, so depending on uh, how much time you have, or it depends on uh, how much you charge uh, your clients. Uh, that we can define, uh, we can zoom in, and we can start defining everything. So, at what point uh, do I stop? I think. Uh, at this point is uh, pretty, yeah. So we have defined a lot of things and there should be a difference between this section one. Okay, so we will uh, upload the section one uh, like this and then the, the call out. If there's a difference, if we have added details and we have added colors and textures, okay, that would be, that would be enough. Uh, for example, here I deleted the, um, the 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 original frame and now this is like floating this mullion so i would use uh, like another uh, detail line uh, to connect uh, this point and this point and now this one and this one okay so now I, this is the horizontal mullion, and this could be the, the vertical one. Okay, so we have solved uh, this. Can we add something different? Yes, we can. Um, and I'm going to show you how to add, for example, uh, the air barrier or the vapor uh, barrier. Okay, so we remember uh, we, we know that this is important uh, when it comes to uh, protecting the facade or the or the wall against water, against air to prevent condensations. Uh, and the water and vapor barriers, if we look at details, Yep, this is it. Uh, well, this is it, but uh, I've lost. Uh, okay, so what's this? It's just a dashed line. Uh, we can use different colors or we can use different uh, dashed uh, uh, distance or whatever. But uh, that's the difference between the air barrier and the vapor barrier. The vapor barrier is always inside the thermal insulation. The air barrier is always outside the thermal insulation. Can we add this information here? Uh, can we have uh, uh, the air barrier and another uh, vapor barrier here? Yeah, let's do it. Um, so we have the thermal insulation, and now I want another line here. Uh, there are different, uh, let's do it with the detail line, because in detail line, you see that here we have line styles. Uh, so we have uh, hidden, uh, wide, uh, whatever. Okay, and uh, so let's create, I'm going to create it here to see it clearly. Uh, so if I select the line and I change this to hidden, okay, so hidden means, means uh, dashed. And now I can select the properties. If I right click and I overwrite graphics in view, I can uh, select the weight. And uh, let's make it something crazy like 10, apply, okay. 
It's not working, why? Because I have selected here thin lines. If I do this, well, okay, so now here we have to be careful. I'll do it again. So if by default, uh, we have this thin line here, everything looks nice. But if I want to uh, turn, uh, if I want to assign different thicknesses uh, to different uh, lines, then uh, I have to uh, activate this, okay? And if I activate that, uh, there would be things that I don't like. Uh, okay, so let's uh, finish this first and then we will see uh, what we can do. Uh, we have selected this line first, uh, change the style to uh, hidden. Okay, so now we have a hidden or attached line. And now right click, override graphics in view, and uh, change the weight. Uh, so let's change to three. Okay, that's good enough. Or maybe we can change it to uh, five. Well, depends. And now uh, we can place it uh, here. Okay, so if we have the air and the vapor barrier, can we change the color? I think so. So let's uh, override graphics in view and uh, we can change the color to something blue. Okay, so we can do that. The same thing we saw in that detail. Okay, and then if we want to differentiate between the uh, air and vapor barriers, uh, we can copy, copy. Okay, we copy, uh, we have to assign the properties again. So uh, override brackets in view by element, uh, the weight, it was five and the color in this case can be red. Uh, that's it. So if we want this code, uh, we can do it really easily. It doesn't take a, a lot of time. But now the problem is that uh, there are uh, line weights that I don't like. For example, I don't like this, okay? Uh, so if I don't like this, uh, can I... Uh, I can't overwrite this because this is a detail component. So I have to edit type. And at some point, the we have the, there should be a way to, Probably uh, we have to insert the, no, um, annotate uh, detail, and we have to work with the, with the eight by eight by eight concrete masonry unit. And then we should edit the, the family itself. If we, if we edit types line weight so oh this is the it's the i have to uh, figure out how to work with this because yes um there's a way if you just override the graphics you can change the projection lines and it will bring the thickness down without changing the family oh really can you do that here oh
So he just select the whole thing in the view. And this up here projection lines, it's kind of oh. hidden. And then I just changed it to like a one. But it could be three. Perfect. Not as thick. Okay, thank you. Okay, so you don't have to change the family. You can do it uh, by override uh, overriding uh, graphics in view, right? Uh, so the same thing here, if this is, uh, I, I don't think it makes sense uh, having this uh, thin, thin line here. So probably we, it will work the same way. Projection lines, uh, weight, let's make it one. And the surface patterns. Line, yeah, it works. Okay, so one is the minimum uh, line weight uh, that we can have here. If we zoom in, uh, it looks like that. That that now it depends on the scale of the of the of the callout itself. Okay, but uh, you see that uh, we can increase the quality of our documents, and there are two ways to do that. We can work in three D, so I recommend you work in the three D view as much as we can. Okay. But if there is something that it's not, uh, I think this is the maximum thing we can do with the with the 3D. So we cannot uh, change uh, this uh, Boolean. That's it, okay? And then uh, we need to go to the section. In this section, uh, we have to find a way. Okay, so we have to decide uh, when the, the quality of the section is enough. And I think it's enough. In this kind of section, I would remove even the uh, override graphic in view, I would remove in the projection lines all the thickness or all the, the line weights. So let's make it uh, one, okay? And I would even remove by category all the hatches, okay? So the cut uh, patterns uh, don't make it visible. And that will be better for the for the section. I have removed uh, some of them, but not all of them. Okay, so make sure that in the section you don't have these uh, uh, these elements there. So just uh, override graphics in view by category. So you don't shut you don't show the cut patterns, and uh, it will look nicer this section. Okay. And then, uh, oof, and we have to work with all this uh, category, uh, projection lines. Uh, if we're working with section, it's better working just with one. I think the problem is the wall itself. I think I have to select a wall, filter, wall. And if we're not going to change anything about the wall, I think it's time to uh, hide in view uh, this uh, category of walls and uh, it will look uh, better, okay? So remember that we have parts and we have walls. Um, controlling the visibility of parts and walls, well, it's something that we have to decide. If we want to change the windows, if we, if we want to insert more windows, we need the wall. We cannot do it only with parts. But once we are done with the design, I would hide the, the walls there. For example, do we need this? I don't think so. So I think we can overwrite all this and make it uh, the projection line. We can make it one. One. Uh, this is a ah, this is a cut line. Sorry, 
uh, it's a projection and it's a cut line. So we make it one. Yeah, now it works. And now with this one, I'll the right graphics in view by element. Uh, if it's cut, we have to go to cut lines. And then uh, we can, uh, where is the weight? Yeah. There you go. But maybe if we want to convey the idea that this is the, uh, the soil, so probably uh, what we can do is to overwrite graphics and at the cut pattern, I can assign a solid fill and I can assign some, uh, assign some gray color. Yeah, I think that's good because, uh, well, that's the, the, where the building starts and where the soil ends or the other way around. I think adding this grayish color especially to the soil mass. I think it, it worked well uh, with that. And uh, now we have to decide what portion of section uh, we are showing here. Because we have, we, we have to start uh, preparing the uh, sheets uh, that we are going to uh, submit. Okay, so we have this section. Uh, select the crop line, make sure that you crop, uh, the, crop uh, the view. And uh, let's start preparing a new uh, sheet. Uh, so this is a zero metric. I think we should load. Uh, we have here in uh, libraries, English Imperial, we do have title blocks. So here we have uh, things with inches. This is 8.5 times uh, 11. Uh, let's find out what kind of document we are submitting. I think this uh, 30 by 42 is the one that we have to work with. Okay, so uh, this is uh, 30 by 42. And again, we can design a title block. I think I showed you or in, in CAT 2, uh, we showed you how to uh, uh, work uh, with uh, title blocks. If you need help with this, uh, I, can, I can show you how to do it. But now it's time to start preparing this. I don't like the default uh, Revit title block. I, I, I don't like it. But anyway, uh, let's start by dragging, uh, for example, we have section one. So let's see what kind of scale. This is too small for sure. Uh, so what scale? Oh, scale. Okay. I'm changing the scale on section one. Uh, one half. Uh, three quarter, uh, one fourth. Let's see, uh, one fourth. If it works. One fourth. Uh, can we make it bigger? Uh, three eighths. I think uh, for this size of uh, paper, uh, three eighths uh, works well. Okay. Uh, so this is it. Now, uh, if we want to uh, prepare the same, well, the, the, the uh, layout that I showed you at the beginning, do you remember that we had an axonometric view here? Then we have the section, and here we have the callouts. So let's try to work with this uh, callout for. Uh, is this uh, big enough? Yeah, I think so. Uh, what's the what's the scale of this callout? Uh, one one. Okay, one foot equals no one inch equals one foot. I think that that's a good scale for uh, for this. Well, what you get? Let me get rid of this title block. Going. Mean. 
Okay, much better. Uh, so now I think uh, if we show uh, this call out and then we show the 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 basement, uh, that will work. What call out is this one? Is it call out two? No, is it one? Yes, it's one. Okay, so let's insert. Uh, call out one here. Is it the same scale? One once, yeah. So when we're inserting callouts, there are two things that are very important. It has to be the same scale. If this is one, one, this has to be one, one, two. And we have to find the reference line. So that's why working with grid lines is important. If it's not aligned, it won't look good. Uh, so uh, move it because there's a point in which you see this uh, dashed line. So that means that this grid line is aligned. This is the F grid line, and this is the F grid line. So that's why we're using grid lines because uh, we can align uh, things, and it's good from the structural point of view. It's good that the basement wall is aligned with the concrete masonry unit wall. Yeah. Okay. So that would be uh, the layout of the first uh, sheet or the second. I don't know. I don't remember. And here uh, we need the. Um, uh, the axonometric view. So we can go to the 3D view. And now you have to find something interesting here. We are showing this wall. Okay, so we are showing this wall and we are showing all that stuff. Uh, so what can we do? Um, I'm going to uh, duplicate this view. And I'm going to name it uh, axonometric Uh, detail. Okay. And now uh, I'm going to work with the section box. Because I just want to show uh, a slice of the building. Okay, and try to make the most of uh, all that stuff because we can extend this so that we can see different uh, elements at different levels. And uh, now there are things that we don't want to show here. Uh, we don't want to show all these levels so we can hide in view all these elements and we can stick to, to this. And uh, now it's about well, you can work with the angle. I don't know what angle would be the, the best. Uh, and can we work with uh, colors? Probably. Uh, remember that uh, now we can use this. Yes. I'll try to adapt this to the size of the sheet we're working with. And then we will have to work with the scale. I don't know. So let's get uh, yeah, this axonometric detail. Let's open the, these and drag the axonometric detail here. It's too small. Okay, kind of. Oh, kind of. Uh, we can adapt uh, the scale, but uh, I think the other one looks better. Uh, the three eighths.
Okay, but this is the kind of thing uh, we are uh, looking for. Uh, we have the axonometric view. In the axonometric view, uh, we have all the elements that we are using. Uh, we have the section at, the, at that scale, three eighths, and then we have the uh, the, sec the callouts at the bigger section. And I think this is the right flow of information that we have to. And we are talking about, uh, we're not talking about design yet, we are talking about uh, construction. Uh, but, um, well, uh, here we have uh, a lot of information about this uh, fashad. Here we have a lot of information, the same information, but with the section. And here we have a call out. We can work with this. Uh, how many uh, sheets like this uh, shall we have in a project? Uh, Whatever it takes, it can be one, uh, five, uh, 10, or 100, depending on how many uh, different facades, how many different roofs, or how many different things uh, we have in a, in a project. But, uh, well, at least I want one. If you try two, because, well, we will have to work with two, because this is, uh, we are defining this facade with all these elements, but we will have to define uh, the second one. I, we don't have time today. Uh, so next day we will define the, the carbon wall with double T here. We have to do that today. Uh, so once we are done with this, uh, the another uh, sheet can be uh, the first section that we created. Okay, let's work with. Okay, I want to work with the 3D view. I'm going to rename uh, the 3D view again. Uh, No, I'm going to duplicate, sorry. And this is a section perspective. Uh, and if we uh, want to work um, with this section perspective, now we have to find a nice uh, section to work with. So there are two sections here. So we have to try both. I don't know which of them would be, would be the, the best. Uh, we can work with section box and then uh, we can have a section here. Uh, and if we right click and work with perspective, then we have uh, this element here. Okay. So this was the, the original section that we have at the beginning of the class. And then it's a question of using uh, display options. Um, I always use uh, both shadows, cast and ambient shadows, and that looks nicer. And uh, then uh, we can use consistent colors. Okay, yeah, we have to try uh, different display options. Yeah, try to use the uh, thin lines and even if we don't show edges, uh, sometimes it's, it looks better. Uh, and uh, the lighting make it always brighter. Okay. 
Okay. Uh, the first thing I see, I, I did with the, with the same file, uh, but uh, with fewer details, I think it was better. Yeah, that one. Okay. So I was working with uh, this for five minutes. And well, probably it's because uh, in this version, we don't have this uh, wall. And I like this effect of uh, transparency in this wall with the, with the louvers. It's nice. Okay. Anyway, we have this section. And then we have to work uh, with, the, uh, with the other one. Uh, so with the same, with another uh, section box, let's try to work with this section back the perspective. Yeah, I think this is good to this one. Okay. And now work with uh, shadows and the uh, graphic display options. Okay, and now this is, uh, we have a curtain wall and it's not interesting. So you have to try to add something, uh, the double skin or, I don't know, but I think uh, working with these two sections, uh, they are good enough. Uh, this one and the, this one. So that's it, we will, and we have the uh, outage today and uh, we didn't have time because I wanted to explain uh, this and that, okay? Yes, well, next week uh, we have work to do uh, because I have to explain uh, how to solve this transition between this roof here, the truss, and uh, there, there will be a slab here, there will be a roof, and then we have to waterproof and, and to insulate uh, this roof here. Yeah, so probably this section, it's something that we will show uh, next week. Uh, this section here, and here we have an overhang. Yeah, we have to work uh, with this section okay. next week. And then you will have one week more uh, to finalize the, all the details. <laughs>